Vietnamese Mahayana Buddhism. Buddhism separated into two major schools, Theravada and Mahayana Buddhism. Today, there are roughly 350 million Buddhists in the world. Mahayana Buddhism spread to many East Asian countries, including Vietnam, Cambodia, China, Tibet, and others. Mahayana Buddhism evolved rapidly in Vietnam into its own form known to Vietnamese simply as Vietnamese Buddhism. In Vietnam, Mahayana Buddhism is a predominant form that is practiced. Chinese and Indian missionary monks first introduced Buddhism in Vietnam during the first century. Then during the end of the second century, the Loi Lao Center was formed as a major Buddhist center. Many of the Mahayana Sutras and the Agamas were translated at the center. Vietnam shares much of its practices with China because of their geographical location. By the Lai Dynasty, during the 10th century, Buddhism became more prominent and much of those who held power practiced the religion. Buddhism in Vietnam during the Vietnam War and Cold War was suppressed greatly by the Catholic government and the Viet Cong. The development of a new government in South Vietnam that was mainly Catholic caused Buddhists to protest. Thich Quang Duc was a famous Mahayana Buddhist monk who set himself on fire in public to protest the new reform. That night, thousands of Saigon residents claimed to see Buddha crying in the sky. This protest caused a radical movement to keep Buddhism alive with thousands of monks protesting and American intervention to protect the freedom of religion that Americans believed in and were fighting for in the war against communism. Collection of the Invisible Powers of the Country and Chronicle of the Eminent Monks of the Garden of Dhyana are both central scriptures specifically tailored towards the Vietnamese Mahayana Buddhists. Additionally, they accept the teachings of the Tripitaka, which was brought over from Chinese Buddhism. Vietnamese Buddhism differs from other forms of Buddhism because it is a combination of the many branches like Zen, Pure Land, and also the indigenous Vietnamese religions. There are many key practices, rituals, and ceremonies. The functions of ceremonies and rituals are to regulate the Sangha monastic routine and to provide cosmic order to all existences. Several routines are practiced celebrating Sangha, including the initiation ceremony for new Buddhists, ordination ceremonies for monks and nuns, annual ceremony with lay people dedicate cotton to the monks, celebration of the Lunar New Year or Tet in Vietnamese, celebration of Bodhi Day or Enlightenment Day, Buddha's birthday, and other various ceremonies and rituals. We visited a Buddhist temple on Central Avenue in San Diego, California. There were plenty of sights to see here. The front of the temple displayed beautifully decorated statues that honored the various Buddhas and guardians. There were also offerings of fruits and incense in front of each statue of the temple. While on our visit, we ran into a lifelong practitioner named Alice Lee. We asked her a few questions regarding the practices in Mahayana Buddhism. I've been practicing Buddhism for 78 years. The temple was a beautiful place and it helped us to learn a lot about the different deities that the Vietnamese Mahayana Buddhists pray to. There was a lady Buddha and also a male Buddha amongst the various statues and guardians that the Vietnamese Buddhists had prayed to. There were also some really nice offerings at every single statue. When it's a big holiday, I pray to the main Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama. But on a daily basis, I pray at home to the Lady Buddha and to the Buddha of longevity, harmony, health, and happiness. 
As we continued around the temple, we noticed that the different Buddhists had their own special rituals and personal ways of praying and honoring the Buddha. The architecture clearly was designed for personal worship as Buddhism is mostly a personal kind of religion. However, they did hold a special ceremony this day for having a mass prayer led by the monks and here you can see them praying together. I pray in Vietnamese every day for two hours. I pray for my family's health and happiness. That being said, we begin to wonder if there really were any universal special ceremonies that the Vietnamese considered sacred to their religion. Since my parents passed away, every year on their death anniversaries, I pray for them at my house. Every day, I also wake up at 8 a.m. to pray until 9 or 10 a.m. The Vietnamese New Year's is the biggest religious holiday. On that day, all the families go to the temple to pray. I also pray on the anniversaries of other relatives' deaths, such as my grandparents or even my parents. As we journeyed more and more people began to come to the temple, we noticed special fruit offerings that were a central theme amongst all the various Buddhas and shrines. When I pray, I offer the Buddhas all different types of fruits. Some types of fruits that we offer are mangoes, papayas, oranges, and apples. I offer them these fruits as a showing of my gratitude for blessing my family and my grandchildren for their health and well-being. Fortunately enough, we got to see a few monks in action while on our visit, but we did notice that there were more assistants than there were monks. The monk and his assistants pray every day for the dead to join the Buddha in heaven. Because there are no meals provided to the monks, their assistants do all the cooking and grocery shopping for them. The people who visit the temple are also offered food because people believe that if you eat the temple food, it will bring you good luck. Now while we were at the temple, there were a few hundred people there praying with the monks, but we soon found out that going to the temple is actually optional. Praying at the temple and at home is the same thing. I say the same prayers that the monk would pray. If people don't have time to go to the temple, then they pray at home. People go to the temple if they are seeking advice on which prayers to use for different purposes. For example, if you are praying for your diseased loved ones and you don't know which prayer to use, then that's when you would go to the temple to ask for the monk's suggestions. As we further examine, we realize that these beautiful prayer pillars had been built, so we figured that there must be some kind of sacred scripture that they were worshiping or praying to during the special service on this day. That depends on which Buddha you're praying to. It also depends on what is the purpose of your prayer. For example, if you're praying for deceased loved ones, you would use a certain prayer that you wouldn't use for any other purpose. In our country, there are no known scriptures, just books of prayers for different purposes. So overall, we really enjoyed visiting this Buddhist temple for insight and enjoyed the interview with Alice. However, we did have a few other questions, but unfortunately they got lost in translation. 
Our overall consensus is that the temple is a very holy and sacred place to the Mahayana Viet Buddhists, and it is clear that they put a lot of pride and great work into what they do here at the temple. So even though visiting the temple is not an obligation, and there aren't many central scriptures or ideas within the specific practices of prayer and worship, it goes to show just how accepting and open the peaceful Mahayana Buddhists really are. Overall, our impression of Mahayana Buddhism is that it is a personal, self-guided religion that does not have the pressures of Western religions in terms of a set way of practicing. The Mahayana Buddhists are very passive in their views of life. Their history is a long tradition that is just as much as a way of life as it is a religion.